Athena tests us every day. I hope my past has not brought ill fortune upon you, Jason. You had nothing to do with what happened to Argos. I hope not. I'm sorry, Jason. Your friend led a virtuous life. His fate awaits him in Elysium. I sensed the Black Tongue's presence, but the runes prevented me from warning you. I'm sorry. I didn't think they could strike us here. I won't make that mistake again. They are devious and choose their targets with care. Are we stranded at sea, then? For the moment. I will go to the deckhouse and see if I can decipher Argos's system. Let me know if I can be of assistance. I am sorry for your loss, Jason. Though I only knew him for a short time, I found much to admire in Argos. Black-tongued bastards! They strike down an old man in the night. Children and old men. That's their level. Can't fight in the open like men. deserved a better end than this. Someone is going to regret what they did. I promise you that. A sad night, to be sure. Some will choose to remember Argos by his ship, but I will remember him by the way he sailed it. The flint in his eye as he scanned the horizon, the wrinkle of his brow as he pored over those charts, but most of all, his joy of being out at sea. If there's any solace to be found, it's that he passed here, where he was meant to be. It's hard to think my father was once a black tongue assassin. To see firsthand what they're capable of. Your father was different. He renounced his past and found peace. That sets him apart from anyone who still calls themselves a black tongue. Yes, you're right. A pity what happened to Argos. He seemed a good man. He was. Well, at least he has this ship to be remembered by. His place in history is secure. But what of ours? When our tale is told, Will it be the tale of Jason, or the tale of Achilles, do you think? You're more than welcome to the title. What man does not care how he is remembered? I didn't say that. I will be remembered by Alcime, and my children. Then that is where we differ. Why else would Argos have built a ship so grand, so beyond anything else ever made? Because he knew, as I do, that glory is the only road to eternity that we mortals may tread. There are more roads than you think. Honor, duty, and family are others. Your name lives on through your sons and daughters, the people you watched over. 
and their deeds. Not the name Achilles. It is too grand a name for the deeds of others to bear it. No. It will be my hands, and mine alone, that scrawl it across the eternal record. Just like Argos. As wise as Argos was, he did not build this ship by himself. Remember that, Achilles. Argos was a genius. The work he left behind will serve as my tutor. What now, Jason? Do you know how to navigate with all these... instruments? Argos taught me a few things. He had begun to show me as well. Perhaps I can assist. The controls here require three points, and then a course can be determined by triangulation. We need to know our starting point, our destination, and a third fixed position. And then what? Argos made it quite simple. The stars are the key. Each destination is indicated by a constellation. He was truly a genius. For example, he assigned Yelkis the constellation Cepheus the king. We can use that as our fixed position. So we just need to know two more constellations? Yes, but the trick is knowing which constellations will form the right combination. We need to know which constellations Argos chose for Kithra and for Delphi, our destination. I'll set Cepheus as a fixed position. Now for our previous location, Kithra. Which constellation? Let's try Libra. And then, our destination. I'll set it to Pygmalion. That combination worked. It set a course for Delphi. You did it, Jason! Our ghosts would be proud. A clever system indeed. I think I can handle it from now on. Study it further, Daedalus. From now on, you'll steer us. It would be an honor to follow in Argos's footsteps. Let's see what the little witch has to say. Even if she knew where it was, getting there is something else in time. You have returned. Oracle of Apollo, I fulfilled your charge. The bloodlines of Ares, Athena, and Hermes stand before you. We know it was the Black Tongues who stole the fleece. Wherever it is, it was they who hid it. Yes, and these three will open the path to that place. I don't know what game you play, Oracle, but none of us here knows where the fleece is. Of course you don't. None of you have ever been there before. The fleece lies in Tartarus. Impossible! What good is the blood of the gods? How are we to go to Tartarus and back again? Make your final preparations, and then bring your crew ashore. We will show you the way. But there will be no turning back once you come to us. Be sure to bring the one called Medea. She has known the touch of Hakate. She will help us find your path. Is it time, Jason? Yes. 
The Oracle told us where we can find the Fleece. Tartarus. Tartarus, of course. I should have known. Of all the deities, Hecate alone can travel freely to and from the depths of Tartarus, the place where she was born. The Black Tongues believe Tartarus is their paradise, the place where Hecate has built a stronghold. The Oracle says you will help us find the path. I need you now, Medea. If I open myself to Hecate, there's a chance I can stretch across the void and sense her. I only hope I do not lose myself in doing so, for all our sakes. I believe in you, Medea, in the good in you. You will do this. I know it. Release the wards. I am ready. May you be the instrument of Hecate's ruin. May you... May Athena's virtues be your guide. Tell me about Athena. Truly, you are becoming a champion of Athena. Continue to act righteously, and she will grant you her blessings. What powers does Athena grant her champions? Athena alone wields Zeus's thunderbolts, and as her champion, so shall you. Tell me of the power of Athena's spear. Alone of all Zeus's children, only bright-eyed Athena may wield her father's lightning. To those she favors, she extends this awesome power. Call upon her in battle, and you may channel those terrible bolts through your spear. Tell me of Athena's judgment. Should you become an agent of Athena's will, you will be expected to administer her justice. Everywhere you go, she will be with you. Whatever you do, she will be watching. When your enemies threaten, call upon your goddess for her protection. She will gather a storm for you, a storm of fury, a storm of wrath to rain justice down upon the wicked. Tell me of Athena's glorious armor, the Aegis. The sacred armor Aegis was a gift to Athena by her father, Zeus himself. Mortals may only wear it for a short time, but that should be all you need. Blessed is he who dons the divine armor of lightning and righteous fury. It's also very becoming. Tell me of Athena's wrath. Call to Athena when you're executing justice upon the wicked. Each time you slay an evil foe, an explosion of lightning will radiate forth. When enemies see one of their own fall before you, they will both know and feel the error of their ways. You were the High Priestess of Athena. What insights into her wisdom can you share? Live justly, and Athena's beauty will reflect upon you. Just as it does on me. Wait, no, I didn't mean it like that. Live justly, and Athena's beauty will enhance your own, whatever your portion may be. You were the High Priestess of Athena. Do not mince words when it comes to what is right, nor waste time with speeches when action is required. So says bright-eyed Athena, whom I found to be generally quite accurate, if sometimes a bit brusque. You were the High Priestess of Athena. What insights into her wisdom can you share? Athena reminds me that you must not judge by appearance. Take me, for example. You would think that being so fair, I've never known hardship. But as you already know, that is not the case, is it? You see, in many ways, my beauty has been a curse. And so it may be with others. One can never tell by appearance alone. 
You were the High Priestess of Athena. What insights into her wisdom can you share? Do you know the tale of Arachne and Athena, Jason? I've heard it. Arachne was a weaver who boasted her skill surpassed Athena's. Correct. And Athena agreed to a contest between them. I know it didn't end well for Arachne. Athena turned her into a spider. Not because she lost the contest. Indeed, her work was flawless. Even by Athena's judgment, Arachne had won. But she had chosen to depict scenes of the gods' infidelity in her tapestry. So Athena punished her for her lack of respect? No, Jason. Athena merely looked upon the tapestry and told her that all works are a reflection of their makers. Arachne was so shamed, she ran off and hanged herself. Athena's transformation of Arachne was an act of pity and mercy. It was Arachne who judged Arachne. What moral do you draw from the tale, Jason? Judge yourself not by what you say or think, but by what you do. Our actions, our deeds, they are the truest reflection of who we are. When Arachne finally did this, her reaction was harsh, but Athena admired her for having done it. May Athena's virtues be your guide. Tell me of the aspects of Athena. The warrior who follows Athena's aspects fights with purpose and resolve. His attacks become difficult to interrupt and increase in lethality with each successive strike. That's all for now, Medusa. Thank you. I am interested in learning how the Oracle thinks I may help you, Jason. Hermes knows the way to the Underworld and to Hades, but not even he journeys into Tartarus. Lycus, what do you know of the wit and guile of Hermes? The centaurs of Arcadia believe in a demon that sits up. Have you ever known one who sees? I speak of small things, little things, one who walks out to the cliffs. This is the... That is no demon. It is Hermes. Whispering in your ear. That's all for now. Damn all oracles and their doublespeak. If it wasn't for an oracle, none of this would have happened in the first place. I'll be damned if I know how I'm supposed to help you, Jason. But I will do whatever is asked of me. Let me know if you require anything. I take my leave. I am ready, Jason. Lycus, what do you know of the wit and guile of Hermes? I'll never forget one of the first times Hermes appeared to me. He gave me a task. Lycus, he said, I want you to think on this. The water seems wetter when it rains. And then he left. I pondered for weeks, meditated. Discussed it, built and tore down entire philosophies, until finally I thought I had his meaning. When next he appeared to me, I spouted explanations and interpretations, speeches I had prepared a thousand times. When I finished, he looked at me with that unreadable face. Oh, that, he said. I overheard some fishermen on the far side of the world say it, thought it was interesting, and then he left. It took me many years to figure out why he asked that of me. And why did he? That is a question you must answer for yourself, Jason. The water seems wetter when it rains. Start there. Think on that. Lycus, what do you know of the wit and guile of Hermes? I will tell you a tale he once told me. 
Once there was a gambler, and not a very good one. Each day he would gamble, and more days than not, he would lose more than he won. After many months, a fellow gambler finally took pity on the man. Now this fellow was an unscrupulous sort, and had learned the art of fixing dice such that they would guarantee good fortune. He offered a set of such dice to the unfortunate gambler, but to his great surprise, the gambler refused them. Why do you refuse this gift? the cheater asked. You lose nine days out of ten. With these dice, you will gamble and win. The gambler replied, There, you are wrong. With your dice, I may indeed win, but I certainly won't be gambling. That's all for now, Lycus. Thank you. Please a man? That's easy. Fill his belly with food and his head with lies of how great he is. Lucky for me, I'm not much of a cook, and I hate liars. Seriously, Atalanta, I'm not being cruel. How do you expect to find a husband? You look like a savage. Suntanned skin, strange markings. Let's say you find a blind man. That could work for a while. But when he finds out you won't cook or clean, what then? Then he learns how to cook what I bring home, and how to clean my things. If the Oracle can show us a way there and a way back, then Tartarus is just one more place that we must go. I wanted glory. Venturing into Tartarus certainly qualifies. There are divergent opinions on which first sprang forth from the dark void of chaos. Gaia or Eros? Earth or love? Now, Gaia as we know provided stability where before there was only nothingness. Gaia was first. Without Gaia, the rest had no place to be created. Ah, but Eros is the basis of creation. And would not the first creation have to be creation itself? There'd have to be some place else before creation could even be possible. I concede that point. And that's why Gaia was first. Yeah, fascinating debate, my friend. Perhaps you're right, but I prefer to believe in the primacy of love. Far better in my eye that the world could not be without love then love could not be without the world. Tartarus. We've been to some strange places chasing the fleece, but none this strange. No living thing has ever laid eyes on Tartarus. We will be the first, Jason. Amazing. That's all for now, Pan. Thank you. The Oracle said there would be no turning back once we went ashore. Argonauts, let's go. Some bathhouse you've got here. Don't think you want to go swimming here. Do not touch the waters, lest you be lost forever. Behold the Gate of Despair, a passageway to Tartarus. The Black Hell of the Underworld. The Gate of Despair. 
Here is where the triumphant Olympians cast down the defeated Titans to end the Great War. After that victory, Hades himself sealed the portal using the rivers of the underworld. The waters you see before you spring from the rivers Styx, Phlegethon, Acheron, and Lep. The river Styx is the boatman's waterway. The Boundary River. Whosoever touches its waters may never again set eyes upon the mortal world. What of Acheron? One touch of the River of Woe dooms a man to a lifetime of suffering. The River Phlegathon. The River of Fire. It burns fiercer than the hottest flame. Leth is the River of Forgetfulness. A single drop will make a man forget all he ever was. Where is the gate itself? If it's beneath those waters, it might as well be on the far side of the sun. A gift of blood will counteract the waters and open the way to Tartarus. No one will spill blood on my behalf. We need only enough to purify the waters and activate the gate. The blood of Ares will purify the searing heat of Phlegathon. The blood of Hermes will navigate the Boundary River Styx. The blood of Athena will ward against the forgetfulness of the River Leth. And the blood of Apollo will shield you against Acheron, the river of woe. You didn't ask me to find the blood of Apollo. There was no need. All oracles of Apollo are descended from the sun god. My blood will stand for Apollo's. When you are ready, one drop of each divine blood assembled here must be cast into the pool. This will purify the water and activate the gate. What am I to do? The reaches of Tartarus are infinite. You must stretch your mind across the portal and seek out the touch of Hecate. You will ensure that Jason arrives close to her stronghold. The gate will be of sufficient strength to carry Jason and two others with him. But know this, whoever dies in Tartarus will remain there for all eternity. I will risk my own damnation for Alcime, but no one else's. If I let you go alone, then damn me for a coward and a false friend. Just say my name. I'm with you, Jason. Here, here. This is a chance for eternal glory. You can't deny me that. After all you've done for me, I would follow you into Tartarus itself. I mean that literally. You'll do me a favor taking me with you, Jason. This is an experience I would give everything to see. No man could ask for a better company. My thanks to all of you. Who will go with you, Jason? Hercules, for one. Let's do this. And? Atalanta. My bow is yours. Hercules and Atalanta. Are you certain, Jason? I am. Then it has been decided. Prepare yourselves. Approach me again when you are ready to begin.
the gate of despair. The end of mortal journeys. The beginning of eternal suffering. Pass through into oblivion. Ni oni kifa hewalake. May we always fight for those we love. I'm ready, Jason. Remember everything you see. I will know it all when you return. I'm counting on you for that. I will do my best to get you close to the fleece, Jason. I know you will. I feel a calmness I have not felt in a long time. I wish I was going with you, Jason. But you know what you're doing. You'll be fine. I thought my labors were something. Tartarus threatens to overshadow them all. It seems a little thing I am asked to do for you, after all you have done for me and my people. It's more than enough, Lycus. I will pray for your safe return. You drops of blood? That's all I'm supposed to do? I feel like a coward, standing here and pricking my finger, while you head off to Tartarus. No one will ever question your courage, Lycomedes. Be careful, Jason. My daughter needs her husband. Everywhere you go, she will be with you. Whatever you do, she will be watching. <laughs> 